job. Thank you. Good job. Thank you. Sometimes, when I'm not being a complete ass, my life, my wife, <laughs> also my life, <laughs> likes to say that I'm a superhero. Now, I know what you're thinking. She's just being sweet, right? But she bought me this T-shirt. Not only that, it's not just her. Some of my coworkers are also call introducing me that way. It's like I'm a mashup of Captain America and Mother Teresa. Well. Reality is, though, I'm not a superhero. And I know you guys are already thinking it, so I'm, I'm really not that egotistical either. <laughs> um, but I am the director of disaster response for World Concern up in Shoreline, and my job is greatly romanticized. More about that later, but that made me think, what are some of the just myths uh, that people have formed about disasters. So I've got three statements. Here's the first one. I want you to call out myth or fact when we read it. It doesn't matter if you're rich or poor, disasters affect everyone equally. <laughs> what if I led you with the wrong slide? No, it's true. This is a myth. 80% of the world's poor live in disaster prone areas. And while you and I might have savings accounts or we might have um, other coping strategies, for them, just the disaster shift can cause them to be looking at food for tomorrow. Let's look at a tale of two different storms. This is Houston, right after Hurricane Harvey. We know 200,000 families were affected and uh, $175 billion worth of um, damage. This slide is from Bangladesh. Bangladesh, we had a very similar storm, only 120,000 families affected and only less than two billion in damage. But this is the real deal. What did you do to my slide, Zach? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I can't blame you. Domestic aid to Bangladesh versus Texas. So on the left, 8.4% of their monthly income. On the right, for Texas, 15.6% of their daily income. Honestly, that means two times the support, if just because you live in America, from your government. Okay, second one. Donations of relief goods are rarely helpful after a disaster. Myth or fact? Myth. Ooh, mixed call there. Mixed call. It's a fact. See, the reality is that a lot of donations after a disaster are not actually related to the needs of the people. Who remembers Sandy Hook Elementary, the tragic shooting? Do you remember there was a campaign to donate teddy bears? An example of some of the 65,000 teddy bears that were shipped to Newtown, Connecticut, a town with only a population of 28,000 people. <laughs> the town spent a fortune on managing, organizing, giving away and eventually incinerating these teddy bears. This is after Hurricane Sandy. These are honest donations from people of, of clothing and other supplies for victims of Hurricane Sandy that are sitting in a basketball court never to be used. So the problem is, a lot of those things can be purchased locally much cheaper, right? Third one, emergency response professionals play the main role in life-saving after a disaster. Mixed fact. Ooh, toss up there again. It's a myth. Like I was saying before, I'm not the, I'm not the hero. After the Nepal earthquake, you remember the big Nepal earthquake, 2,424 search and rescue professionals, 133 rescue dogs. Two weeks later, they had rescued 16 people. That's right, one rescue for every 140 professionals. Most were, were done by volunteers like these guys right here. 95% of people after a disaster are rescued by neighbors and family. These are the real heroes. That's why when I work with World Concern, a lot of my focus is on mobilizing local disaster response. So I'm not doing the other things. I'm not rescuing people. I'm not you know, delivering unnecessary goods. Often what I do looks like this. This is in Haiti. We were doing a multi-agency. You can see three different agencies here. We're working on identifying what are the needs of people and how can we mobilize the resources that already exist to get where they're most needed? Really, it's a lot about coordination. You see, I sometimes describe my job as flying for 40 hours in coach, then sitting in four hours of traffic every day just to attend meetings all day long in the heat where we talk about things that we don't know how to solve. <laughs> as I said, coordination. Honestly, it's a lot more Dilbert than Daredevil, right? <laughs> so. What does that mean for you? Well, I would challenge you, if you're looking at how to help in a disaster response, start looking at organizations that don't needlessly ship goods that they're not prepared for, that also focus on building the capacity of local organizations for their own response. My name's Chris. You can send me a message on Twitter if you have any questions. 
Thank you very much.